Right guys, um, my DSLR isn't functioning properly, so I'm gonna try and do this video um, with my GoPro. Um, basically, today what we're covering is what I would consider to be the perfect way to make off your boxes um, for your extra low voltage lighting, etc. And it could be applied to um, any lighting really, whether or not it be your low voltage um, stuff, etc. i.e. mains. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's proceed. So, what I have is, um, I've got a feral crimper, feral crimping tool, I've got a set of feral crimps, I got this stuff on eBay um, for I think sort of like £8, £9, something like that. If you search for feral crimpers on there, they're really cheap. I mean, it's not the best quality if I'm honest, but it does the trick. Um, I like to use the, I like to call these lazy strippers, but they're um, CK's automatic um, wire cutters. Um, they're, they're useful to use. Um, I'm going to be doing this with Wagos. So we've got the um, 221 Wagos, the lever ones, which means that it's really easy for us to take take out the cables and put them in, change them around, etc., which is quite useful. Um, I have 3D printed my own Wago holders. Um, I originally did these back in uh, January, or I think it was December 2018 um, and um, sent them to Whisker sort of uh, January 2019. Um, I noticed they bought out their own version um, uh, or I think it's theirs anyway, um, basically uh, mid, mid last year or late last year. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, these, this version that I've printed at the moment um, basically means that you could fit even up to five way where you goes if you wanted to. Um, you can have up to five in there. I mean, I could make even bigger. I could make a, I could do a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, a whatever. It doesn't really matter really, but at the moment I've just done a three and a five. Um, and you can, as you can see, they just slot in like that. So um, yeah, threes, fives, etc., will fit in there absolutely fine. Um, I am going to use the Whisker 116 box, which I imagine that um, not many of you have seen. Um, it, basically, I asked Whisker, um, contacted one of the guys over there, said, can you send us some, some box samples, etc. Just try and see what, um, what spikes, etc. fit. Um, and they sent me this box, which, uh, well, they sent me a load of boxes, but um, so I found out that not only does the 108 box fit, which isn't here right now. Uh, let me have a quick look, one second. Nope, no 108 box here at the moment, um, but 108 box is a little bit smaller than the, um, was it 106 box, sorry, not 108. Is it 108? No, it's, I get confused. Oh sort that out in a minute um anyway um i think it's the 106 box um so the 106 box is a bit smaller than this it's 80 mil by 80 mil i think this is is it 110 by 110 something like that um or maybe this is a hundred i'm not really sure um 308 is probably the most popular box out there um so that's probably the most common used box um, we've got a 407 here and a 206 and as I say I'm using the 116 um, which is this longer box which is quite useful if you wanted to if you really wanted to put a driver away or something like that you could probably get that in here it's quite big um, I think it's quite a reasonable price so that that's a quite a good option right anyway so we get on with mounting options um, now obviously most ideally, if possible, you would fix your boxes to um, a solid structure, so brick wall, um, a fence if it's owned by the person you're working for. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a grey area this one, but basically, if you um, if you fit to the neighbour's fence, the argument is always well, if they have to replace their fence, then they've got to take all your wiring off, etc. Um, I mean, fences are not particularly that great to mount to for the fact that you know they're meant to be replaced every so often. Um, I guess make your own judgment there. Um, we've all done it, so yeah. Um, but brick walls, rendered concrete walls, so on and so forth, best things to mount the boxes to. Um, failing that, if you don't have any of that to mount to, you can use um, hardware like what we make, um, which is our whisker mounting spikes. So we've got the horizontal standard. Um, I noticed that, that so this fits the, the uh, 116, so basically it would fit downwards like that, so it fits in there. 
um, we've got the um, so that was the horizontal standard this is the horizontal long um, you could do the I think no, this bracket doesn't fit in there but I mean if you took the grey bracket off this would fit on um, and you could mount it like that downward um, that's the uh, vertical long um, you could use the vertical standard mount it like that um, you could Yep, you could use the SWA spike topper, our SWA spike topper, um, with this box. Um, but I don't see why you would, because you're not going to get an SWA in the 116 box. There's no, um, they're, no they're not 20 mil knockouts. I think they're 16 mil. Um, but basically, with this SWA topper, you attach either um, one spike in the middle, one horizontal, what standard or long in the middle, or you could do two on the sides for extra strength if you need to. Um, and then there's a couple of cable tie loops here. So cable tie around there, cable tie around there. So when you've got your, so if you mount a, um, a 308 box like that, you can have your cable coming out um, and then you can use the cable tie loop to secure it there and there. And then as it disappears off into the ground, you've got the height that you need to make off your glands. Um, I mean, if I was making off my glands anyway, I would say that you'd make your glands off, then mount the box, not mount the box while it's, not do your glands while it's on the, on the bracket, it's probably going to pull it around a lot and make the bracket quite loose in the ground um, but yeah um, use the cable tie loops to secure your cables etc it's quite useful if you've got SWAs anyway on to the um, the bit about the boxes so um, to, to make a quick note I don't know if you've noticed this before but on whiskers boxes they have an IP rating written on the front so if you look at a, um, a Frio Eight or 407 it says so it says on the 308 IP66 now I'm sure it used to say what it does on the 407 IP66 slash IP67 now the slash um, basically means if you use the um, if you use a stuffing gland on this so if you use a 20 mil 20 mil standard stuffing gland then you'll be IP67 if you just use the membrane and you can i've heard someone say oh no you can't do that but you can that's the point and that's why you can't use a gland on this one um then it's ip66 so let me walk you through how we do this uh so with these boxes what you need to do with the membranes is basically pre-pierce the um the membranes because you're not likely going to push the cable through without pre-piercing i tend to use like a terminal screwdriver you could use something smaller um so i'm going to go in here here and here um you'll notice that i did or i had already um got went through this box earlier and um yeah anyway so um so you make your holes in your box um and you get your cables ready for termination now what i would normally do is strip the cables back giving you about 80 mil of single insulated conductor um, and I like to use um, CK um, we like to call these lazy strippers but I suppose they're their CK automatic wire cutters um, there's another brand that escapes me right now um, oh this is quite tight I'll have to strip it again there we go um, yeah another brand that escapes me right now but um, they they it's like a plastic set of strippers which you'd think wouldn't be that great but actually they're um they're really 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 good um they're quite pricey though um so the strip is just a little bit longer just to match with the others um yeah so what you're going to do is you're going to get your cables ready so let's say this one's going to be our feed cable and what we'll do is we will get um some labels um now what i'd recommend is that you get a label printer um brother makes some really good ones there are other brands available obviously this is one we use in our workshop um so it's not really meant for outside you need a computer to work with it there's some great handheld ones out there that you can use and you can use um, excuse me you can use brother's heat shrink tape so um that is these little tapes um they heat shrink basically on a roll and it prints on those um, so what I would recommend you do is you basically label the cables. Now this is not only helpful for you, but helpful for the next person who has to come along and do whatever on the installation, say 10 years time, your lights aren't working or whatever. Um, and you know, you're not the person that the customer knows anymore. Um, they're going to call another electrician in and it will make everyone's life a lot easier if everyone just did this. Um, basically, um, 
labeling each of the cables so we're going to label this one as feed in this is going to be our uh, wall light one I always, I don't know about you, but I always struggle, if you've used heat shrink tape, sometimes I struggle a little bit to get the uh, tape open, uh, to get it on the cable, so I tend to just take it and just give it a little blow, um, and it helps open up the cable. So we get those on, um, and then we need to get the heat gun out and shrink those down. I'll just go and get that. Um, so I've got um, just a Roby um, heat shrink gun. Now there are, with a lot of heat shrink guns now, there are attachments specifically for cables, which I'll put in a picture. Um, they're really, really useful, make life super, super easy. Anyway, we're just gonna heat shrink these on. Now this heat shrink's a little bit large, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit that, but I think it should shrink down enough to get us on there nice and secure. That looks like a nice size. Hopefully you agree with that. Get that shrunk in. So it's good, I mean, say the brother tape's got quite a real wide range of uh, um, sort of size it can shrink down to, which is quite nice. Um, you could, I've seen a lot of contractors do it, um, you could make the heat shrink a bit longer so that it covers the, um, the cores as they start to come out, but to do that, in this case, we'd have had to use bigger, uh, sorry, smaller tape so that it would have actually shrunk down over the cores. Anyway, right, so you're going to push push straight through. So we're going to bring our feed in here. Um, now, sometimes uh, it's a little bit of a struggle to get to get your cables in. So you have to use a screwdriver to kind of punch through. But looks like we've got got away with it this time. Here we go. Now, when you pull your cables in, what you want to do is kind of bring them a little bit longer than they need to be inside the box. Um, so I'm bringing the labels inside the box because I don't personally think they should be outside the box. Aesthetically, they're not great for the client to look at, etc. Um, so I think it's better to bring them in. And then, I've, see I've pulled them in too far. What I want to do is pull back a little bit because I want the membrane to kind of pop out a little bit here. So I bring it back just a bit, just a touch on each one, um, just so about the same. Right, so strain relief. Normally, when you're using um, the 308 boxes, etc., there's a 206 here, and they've got this threaded section that uses stuffing gland with. The stuffing gland gives you strain relief, i.e., when it's tight around the cable, it kind of stops it from pulling out. In the case of just using just the membrane, you need to provide some sort of strain relief because right now the cable is really easy to pull out. What I recommend, um, and someone else come up with this, um, an old work colleague of mine, um, but basically, cable ties work an absolute treat. So if you take a cable tie and you basically tie it tightly round the base of the cable just as it comes in. Now get it nice and tight. You could uh, um, use a tensioner tool, something like that. Um, and it needs to be trimmed off. I'm going to get each of them on, in, on first and I'm going to try and locate my uh, end cutters, side cutters to... Um, uh, to get these cut and trimmed in place. Now these are really small cable ties. You could use slightly larger cable ties. It's quite useful if you do because it gives a bit more tension in terms of um, preventing the cable from pulling out of the box. Um, but the only trouble with a bigger cable tie is that when you've got a small cable it kind of doesn't fit as well around it. So just get them on. So you might have only croppers or whatever um, to cut this. I mean, these are these are probably the easiest thing to actually use. Um, we use them a lot in the workshop. Um, they do make life a lot easier. The next thing I'm going to recommend you do is get ferrules. If you haven't got any. So in this particular case, some of these ends are already tin, so it's going to make my life super easy. So I'm going to just literally just whack these crimps on. Literally, they just slide straight on. Um, I've got one to strip, so I will do that in just a second. But it looks like the red ones are the right size for these. Um, the great thing with with um, feral ferrules is that they're open-ended, so you can strip your cable too long 
feed it through all the way and then just cut it off after, after you've crimped it. Um, there's probably some automatic cutters somewhere um, that would crimp and cut the end perhaps. Um, on the CK cutters there's a, uh, you probably know this already, but there's a little stop if you want to use the stop to get your cable length. I tend not to use it to be honest, I kind of just, I find it gets in the way, but um, yeah. Give you an idea at least. I'll give them a little twist. And I'll get the crimp on there. Oops. Now, um, here in the workshop, we actually solder all the ends or tin the ends. So if you bought lights from us, you wouldn't actually have to use these at all because if you use the full length of cable, um, then the ends will already be tinned. If, um, if of course you cut the cable, then you're gonna need to probably do something like this. Um, and you can see I've got a little bit of copper sticking out there so I can just trim that back. Um, and I mean, if I'm, it doesn't really matter to be honest. I mean, he's gonna say this car's not that sharp, but yeah. So that's so that's how you make off your connections. Um, that is to me, it's the best. To me, that's the best practice. Um, we've done. I've what I've done is about um, 80 mil of cable um, coming out. So 80 mil of single cores coming out, which sort of gives us an, enough room to to dress into our connections. Um, and I've left enough double insulation to get our label on etc so that anyone looking in this box would actually know what is what. Anyway, um, I've already done a video on how the connections are with um, constant current extra low voltage but basically if I'm using some Wago 221s um, these crimps fit in beautifully inside. Um, you can push them all the way out to the end, close the connection and it's, and it's done, it's nice and secure. Um, so if I was doing a feed in I'd basically go into the red of wall light one out from the black of wall light one into the red of wall light two and finally um, the um, black of wall light two back to the feed in right so if I get my little holder in um, this just pushes in the two so just here these two little connections back here um, so I'll just push that in. I'm still working on this a little bit. I'm just using it on a new printer at the moment. Actually, I'm going to change this for the three. There is a three around here somewhere. Here it is. We'll go for the three because we don't need a f we don't need that many connections. So we'll go for a three. Um, so what we would do is essentially just put our connectors in each one just to kind of secure it. Push this down properly. one yeah so this is your best practice from for for connections in your inside your boxes um, obviously this box would actually be mounted I'm just sort of orientating it to show you um, how it all works together um, but yeah labeling is the most important thing because if anyone's got to come back and fault find this it's gonna make it so much easier um, the only thing obviously with this is that you could, the only th the th one thing you could do to make this a little bit better is what you could do is probably, you could even have longer length, maybe even more mating, where you could probably do with like 120 mil of cable and then you could dress it around the sides, etc., to make it super neat. Um, but that at least gives you an idea of, of um, a really good practice of actually doing all your connections and how you should mark everything up. Questions, comments, etc. put them in, um, put them in below. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you didn't, and um, don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. Um, hopefully I get to bring some more content to you soon. Um, I'm looking at doing the uh, lights outdoor positioning etc um, at some point soon. I've made up like a little box that's um, got a driver in it that will work off of um, a few DeWalt or Makita batteries just so that I can go out and actually go and find some big trees out in the out in our local park and light those up and kind of show you what um, positioning etc and how it all affects everything. Um, but yeah anyway see you soon guys.